Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, I want to show you how to make a scatter plot using your TI-89 graphing calculator. Now this is a really great calculator, but it's got a lot of little menus in there, so watch closely as we go through all of the steps so you can see how to make one of these uh, wonderful plots, okay? So for this example, I'm going to uh, borrow one that I did in another uh, video, uh, just so we actually have some data points to work with, and we actually have uh, a picture of what the scatter plot should look like when we're all done. In this uh, scatter plot, we're comparing the hours of study to exam scores. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our calculators and see if we can take all of this data and actually put it into the calculator. All right, the very first thing we need to do is uh, get to um, our data matrix editor. So to do that, you'll notice I'm on the home screen. Go ahead and go to your apps. Look for the option, it says data matrix editor. Select it and go ahead and press enter. Now here's where you get to tell the calculator where to store uh, your table of data. I'm going to go down to new and actually just go through uh, these few options here. So the type that I'm storing in here, I'm just going to leave it as data. I'm going to store it into the main folder. And for variable, this is what we're going to choose to call the data. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what you call it uh, other than you can't use uh, some values like say X or Y that you usually use for variables anyway. Uh, since we're talking about hours of studying, let's just call this H for hours. Um, you can even actually give it an entire name if you want to spell it all out, H-O-U-R-S. It takes a, a, a quite a while to type on this thing since uh, the alphabet is you know mostly on the keys, but then you have your X and Y up here. So let's see, what did I call this? H-O, okay, close enough, we'll leave it at that. Uh, now we'll press enter and enter one more time. So you got to do it twice. Now we're going to do our first data in the C1 column and our second data into the C2 column. Keep in mind the names of these columns, C1 and C2, they'll come up a little bit later on. Okay, so let's get in those hours. So 2, enter, 4.5, enter, 5, 5, 6, 3, 10, 9.5, and 8. Okay, so there's all of our hours. Let's get to the top of that second column and do the same thing. So let's see, 53, 35, 91, 72, 60, 62, 85, 78, 99. Okay, looks pretty good. Both my lists are exactly the same size, so I, I don't think I left anything out. Okay, so now that the data is actually in the calculator, we need to get our plots uh, set up so that it displays correctly. Up top here, you'll notice under F2 it says Plot Setup. Go ahead and press your F2 button so we can get in there. Uh, it's got a lot of plot options. None of them uh, are set right now, so we'll press F1 to define a new plot. Okay, the very first option is what kind of plot are you going to make? It's set to scatter, but if you press your right arrow button, you'll see other types of options that you have. You can do scatter plot, box plot, histogram, uh, even a modified box plot. Okay, so lots of good stuff. We'll leave it as scatter plot. Okay, press our down arrow. What kind of marks do we want them to use? So we've got boxes, crosses, plus signs, squares, and dots. Uh, I'm just going to leave this as a little box, but if you want smaller points, say if you've got lots of data, it, it can be more uh, handy to put uh, the dot feature in there. So every data point will look like a little box. Okay, now comes the important part. It wants to know where it should pull its data, and it has this little X and Y. Remember, this came from column C1 and C2, so we need to put those in there. So C1, okay, there we go. And the next one, C2. Uh, All right, so I have my data. Uh, leave this to no, and we'll go ahead and press enter to save. And now we've defined our plot. Now we're not done yet. We also want to go to our window to make sure that it uh, is viewing everything that we need to in terms of all this data. Okay, so all of that looks good. Go to second window. Let's see if we can define our values. Uh, for our independent variable right down here, we want something a little bit lower than all of these values. And some, something a little bit higher than all of these values. Um, let's see, since we're doing hours of stay, let's go between, let's say, negative 2 and 12. There's no way you can study for a negative number of hours. We're just using that value to make sure that uh, we can see everything. Okay, we'll leave the scale at one. Uh, y minimum, let's set this to negative 10. 
up to a positive 120. And again, no one has a score of negative 10. We're just using this uh, values uh, uh, really extreme, well, not an extreme value, but something a little bit larger, a little bit smaller than our actual data so we can see everything. Uh, go ahead and set the scale here to be 10, just so that every tick mark uh, represents a value of 10. Okay, so we've got our data in there, we've defined our plots, we've set our window, now we can actually go look at our data. Uh, press second and graph, let's take a look. Okay, so here we have our x-axis, y-axis, our tick marks over here represent 10, and there are all of our data points. Let's compare this to the graph we did earlier to make sure that all of this data is correct. And you can see it's actually a pretty good visualization of what we have. Uh, in fact, I'd probably trust the calculator. It's probably a little bit more accurate than uh, the work that I've done by hand. Now, if you want to uh, go through these values one at a time and see exactly what they are, your F3 button is your trace button. So when you press that, it will highlight one of your data points and give you the X and Y value. So the first one's flashing there. It says I'm at 253. If you use your right and left arrow buttons, it'll skip around to other data points. So now I'm on 572. That way you can see the exact value of, of you know, some individual data point that's in there. Now on a side note, sometimes you'll have other lines and things that are on your graph. And if you, you have a lot of other stuff that is messing up your graph, check your Y equals. So press this green button, Y equals, to see if you have any equations or functions stored in your calculator. I'm going to put in a Y squared just so you can see the problem that I'm talking about. I'm going back to my graph and, oh, well, you know, it graphed x squared along with all of these data points. I really don't want to see x squared right now. Uh, so if you have other uh, equations and graphs on there you don't want to see, go into your y equals screen. And you could either just erase this entirely or you could take the check mark off. To take the check mark off, just press your F4 button. You'll see that little check mark that was next to it is gone. So see, check mark, it'll show it. No check mark, it's entirely gone. Uh, that way, when we go actually look at our graph, it won't plot that x squared. Okay, so there are lots of menus to go through, lots of uh, things you have to be careful you set correctly. But now we have uh, our entire data plot, and we can see our a nice scatter plot. Awesome. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.